In the previous video lecture, we understood that, type 2 hypersensitivity reactions are antibody-mediated cytotoxic reactions. In these reactions, antibodies bind to the antigens present on cell surfaces and, cellular destruction results in host tissue damage. Today we will understand, the mechanisms of type 2 hypersensitivity reactions. Let's begin. The main mechanisms of type 2 hypersensitivity reactions are Complement activation Opsonization or, opsonized phagocytosis and, antibody-dependent, cell-mediated cytotoxicity. We have covered these mechanisms in detail, earlier on this channel. In this lecture, we will study them in brief. Complement activation Recall that, the complement system consists of a set of proteins in blood plasma that, through a cascade of enzymatic reaction result in the destruction of the target cells. Suppose this is a red blood cell. The antigens on this RBC are recognized by antibodies present in the individual. Antibodies bind to these antigens. Next, complement protein C1 binds to the FC region of the bound antibodies. This activates the classical complement pathway. Now, the destruction of this red blood cell can happen in two ways. First fate may be opsonization or opsonized phagocytosis. Recall that, as a result of complement activation, C3B is deposited on the cell surface. These C3B proteins now act as opsonins and coat the cell. Phagocytes such as macrophages have C3B receptors. Thus, these C3B molecules deposited on the cell surface are recognized and bound by C3B receptors present on phagocytes. And as a result, the cell undergoes opsonization or opsonized phagocytosis. Now, here we need to note that, besides C3B molecules, antibodies also act as opsonins. This is because, macrophages and neutrophils also have FC receptors for antibodies. So, if enough antibodies coat the target cell, then it can be easily phagocytosed by phagocytes. Also, opsonization is most effective when both antibody and C3B opsonize the cell. The second outcome of complement activation is, cell lysis by membrane attack complex. This happens if the complement cascade goes to completion. Recall that, membrane attack complex is a group of complement proteins that are deposited on the target cell surface. It forms a pore in the membrane of the cell, and results in its destruction by cell lysis. Complement-mediated reactions are the main mechanisms underlying hemolytic anemia, blood transfusion reactions and hemolytic disease of the newborn. Now, complement-mediated reactions can also occur in case, the antigens are present on cells that are part of a solid tissue. Or in other words, the cells are fixed. Let's say, these are the cells of a solid tissue. And the individual has preformed antibodies, recognizing antigens on these cell surfaces. Again classical complement pathway is activated when, antibodies bind to these antigens on cell surfaces. Cellular destruction takes place by membrane attack complex cytolysis. In complement pathway, complement proteins C3A and E5A are also released. Besides resulting in inflammation, these proteins also act as chemoattractants or chemokines. As a result, leukocytes such as neutrophils, eosinophils and natural killer cells migrate from circulation to this site. Since the target cells are part of a tissue, phagocytosis is not possible. Therefore, phagocytes such as macrophages and natural killer cells release their cytotoxic contents onto the target cells and cause additional tissue damage. Another mechanism by which further cellular destruction takes place is known as antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity. 
ADCC is defined as, the process of killing antibody-coated target cells, by certain leukocytes having, specific FC receptors, for these bound antibodies. The cytolytic capability of these cells results in direct lysis of antibody-coated cells. We have already discussed ADCC in the video lecture on the action of antibodies. Let's now discuss how type 2 hypersensitivity reactions result in hyperacute graft rejection. Hyperacute graft rejection refers to the destruction of graft immediately after transplantation. It occurs due to the presence of pre existing antibodies in the recipient's circulation. These antibodies recognize allo antigens present on the endothelial cells of blood vessels within the transplanted organ. Recall that, alloantigens are antigens from other members of the same species. The most important alloantigens in hyperacute graft rejection are, ABO antigens and MHC1 molecules. ABO antigens are also present on the endothelial cells of blood vessels. It becomes more crucial when the transplanted organ is highly vascularized such as, kidney. As said before, Hyperacute graft rejection occurs when the recipient has pre-existing antibodies against these alloantigens. These pre-existing antibodies can be formed as a result of some previous blood transfusion, transplant etc. Let's say, this is a transplanted kidney. Here, this image is representing blood vessel of the graft. These are endothelial cells of blood vessels and these are the alloantigens. When pre-existing antibodies from recipients' circulation bind to these antigens, they rapidly initiate the classical pathway of complement activation. The graft is destroyed within minutes by complement-mediated endothelial damage, inflammation, intravascular clot formation, and hemorrhage of blood into the graft. The chances of hyperacute rejection of a graft is avoided in practice by predetermining blood group of both recipient and donor, and cross-matching. That's all in today's video lecture. Let me know your opinions and suggestions about these video lectures in the comments below. Keep supporting this channel. Thank you for watching.